Okay, hi, Stacy Burke here. <laughs> Sorry for the bad lighting, but this is the only place I could really record at work while watching security screens because if a customer comes in, I need to be attending them. And it's weird, like all of a sudden there there's no one here, and all, of a sudden, all of a sudden someone's here right away and they need help within like a second. It's weird how that happens. But anyway, so this is kind of dead today so I thought I would talk to you because <laughs> there's there's this video that I've been wanting to put out and stuff there's a, a lot of uh, things I wanted to put out um, about you know my marriage and divorce and stuff and just uh, wanted to do story times about things and clues that uh, were always probably there but I kind of just um, denied them ignored them or didn't think anything was, didn't really put that much importance on it because uh, mainly I I got married, I, I do, took vows and so I just chalked it up like everyone's not perfect, that's just flaws, that's okay. But things that really did hurt me. And the one of the things that I want to talk about is, uh, I'm not going to go really in order because there's things I kind of talked about in previous vlogs. But there's one um, that I'm going to uh, mention first. A clue number one was when we got married, as you saw on The Girls Next Door, me and my husband got married on The Girls Next Door, season five, tying the naughty. But like um, at the end of our wedding, you know, wedding night, you know, when you go to your room, it is. <laughs> See what I mean? Uh, okay, trying to get back in the lighting. Okay, you know your wedding night when you go to your room, right? It's customary to swoop up the bride and carry her over the threshold, right? Either at your hotel or when you come home. I know it's probably the romantic in me that was looking forward to that but it didn't happen we go to the room and he just opens the door walks right in and I go uh, excuse me and he goes what and he he really when I told him he didn't understand why it was so important like what why and I go I'm your bride you're supposed to carry me through the threshold <sighs> Well, you know, after like the reception and stuff, I guess, you know, I didn't know this at the time, but when he would drink after a few, he wasn't himself anymore. Like he was just, he basically checked out. The person I knew just checked out and someone else was checked in. I kind of, I didn't really force him, but I was kind of like insistent that he carry me over the threshold. And I was kind of sad and, and, um, he finally tried but it was like it was it was like a comedy show he bumped my head he was just it just did not work out <laughs> it did not work out and we really didn't have the romantic honeymoon that most people would have um and I just chalked it up like oh you know you know it was like a crazy you know, we did it on the show. It was like, it was a crazy, we filmed, it was exhausting, uh, it was party weekend. I totally get it. And then even the day after when we were getting on the bus, the party bus to go home, he was kind of like grumpy and he just would not, he just wanted to sleep all the way, which is fine. He just was sleeping all the way and he wasn't very romantic and sweet and lovey-dovey he was just like all of a sudden just like oh like it was almost like we just went to a party and um he was just hung over and drunk and just wanted to sleep and didn't want to be bothered like I wasn't even really there it was weird it was weird but like I said this is I was just chalking up like oh he's exhausted whatever but even after he got all his rest and everything, and we get to our apartment as husband and wife, he did it again. He did not carry me over the threshold. And I know this sounds really, maybe it sounds really pathetic and 
and why I'm so upset over something so little. But it's like, if you know me, the little things matter, like little things like that. And you, I would think that he would remember since that just happened on our wedding night. And uh, I said, never mind, never mind. <laughs> it's just little things like that. That's one of the clues that he he would say romantic things when we're in public and sometimes in private, but it was almost like he was trying to convince himself or other people or me of it. And it wasn't really genuine. I never really felt that it was genuine. So I don't know, would you, you guys, like if, if it was like cover, cover, carrying your bride over the threshold, little things like that, especially if it's a wedding. You know, brides want to, you know, that they have expectations. I understand it's all about expectations. And I didn't want to get too upset about it. But at the same time, I was planning this was it. This is my marriage forever. And it still might be. I don't know. I might not ever get married again. I don't know. But it was just like, it kind of hurt me. Because I just wanted something romantic, you know, and sweet and kind and, and just tradition carrying me over the threshold and never happened and I gave him two chances um, so that was a big big one of the big clues I guess the biggest clue was before he even got married when I first started dating him remember MySpace I was dating him and all of a sudden I get a DM or not well, I forget what it was but it was a MySpace um, message I guess from this uh, girl and she goes hey I think we're dating the same guy because you know on MySpace and, and Facebook and all that you put pictures of like oh I met this person and you could post things and I guess he posted things of me of my picture and and of course I put pictures of him and she saw it and she goes I think we're dating the same guy and I guess she left some of her stuff at his apartment and uh, and so she was telling me this, and so I immediately text him, and he was at work. I go, what's this going on? And he goes, oh my God, it was some girl I was kind of dating, not a big deal. I, I ended it. I don't know what she's doing. I'm going to give her a call and tell her to stop doing it, stop harassing. And so I said, okay. And I didn't really think anything of it because there was really no time to see her with me because we were kind of like inseparable. So, um... Yeah, be right there. <laughs> See, they say, excuse me, before she even walked in the door. It's so funny. But anyway, yeah, there was that girl from MySpace, and he said that he called her at work and said, what are you doing? Don't be, don't be, because my girlfriend now, blah, blah, blah. And so I just trusted him that, you know, okay, you know, because we just met, and I figured, okay, yeah, he was probably dating her, and then all of a sudden, he's dating me, and give him time to end it it was like I at that time I wasn't gonna be um, jealous because we just started dating you know so it wasn't like he was cheating on me he had her first and then I came along so I didn't really put any mind to it I just kind of like blocked her off of my space because I didn't want to get any you know, I didn't want to get into any drama um, and you know he he was we were kind of inseparable and and that and eventually he moved in with me so not a big deal and plus to tell you the truth I wasn't really that jealous with him too much because he was unable he had difficulty being intimate in bed so and here comes the mailman <laughs> I don't want the mailman to hear that Hello. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he said, this is me. Okay, so, you know, I don't know. I guess I never really got jealous because I knew he he couldn't really cheat on me if he tried. But then again, maybe think, looking back, maybe he did. Maybe, like, he had a whore complex, you know. And I say this because the first time we got intimate, he it was difficult and he blurted out you whore you slut just like on sex in the city and then i noticed like sometimes like he'd be on the computer looking at like 
escort services and I know you're probably saying, oh my God, Stacy, what are you doing? Duh. But it's like, he never, he would be too cheap to go out with them. Like, I think he was just looking at them <sighs> and he had magazines. So, so I don't know. I don't know. There was some, there's a lot of clues and even all these clues don't really give me an explanation of what's going on with him because it just, it, everything does not make sense. I mean, the only thing I can think of, ooh, I'm getting blurry, is like, he, he was just, in, how, what he told me one day, he's incapable of love. Like, he, he is kind of like a narcissist. He's always thinking about him, even when it's, when he's empathizing with other people. It's, he will feel so bad that you feel bad for him because he's empathizing so much if that makes sense I don't know maybe I shouldn't have vlogged about this at work because I'm kind of distracted people coming in and all this kind of stuff but I really wanted to, to do this I really wanted to do this video of certain clues that were always there but I couldn't make sense of them it wasn't like he was cheating on me even if he did it wasn't like a solid point to that there was this little, he has I think he has some mental issues I really do I think there is something going on with him which is brings me to my point that I was that's why I was so I guess forgiving because I know there was something up with him granted he had health problems heart problems he had of course he lost one eye so he had eye problems he had um um he has a blind one, he has a heart problem, he had um, cancer of the saliva gland, like he has a lot of issues. So that could be with the plus he had a lot of uh, stuff traumatic in his childhood and his family, like woo, don't get me started on them, wackadoo. So it's like, I get it, you know, I totally get why he's like probably messed up as well. So I was very forgiving because I'm like, you know, we're all not perfect. Maybe I'm his wife for a reason because I will never leave him. I'm here for him. I'm going to try to be the best wife I can without sacrificing myself so much. Like I really tried not to sacrifice so much. That, that's why I did get upset and I did get mad sometimes. And I would tell him no sometimes for certain things that he wanted me to do. And I'm like, I can't. I got to work. Like, you know, because first when I, we got married, I was just doing the fetish modeling and it was kind of drying up at this at this time. And he was paying most bills, and he told me adamantly that he doesn't believe in gender roles, that I need to pay my own way. So I got a job, and I paid the bills, and his job was to pay the rent. But I paid his cell phone, I paid the electric, I paid the groceries, I cooked, I cleaned, I did everything. Well, he still complained about that. Like, it wasn't enough. Like, he wanted, he, like, it was just weird. He was always complaining about money, and and he was like, at the same time, he made really he made a lot of money. So I was wondering, where is his money going? What's I get? He he's just a spendaholic. He's not really good at saving. He's he's good at he's he will just spend it on random things, going to concerts, and you know what? To tell you the truth, I don't know what he really spends his money on. Maybe he does spend them on escorts. I don't know. Now after we're getting this divorce and a lot of things are coming out of the woodwork, I, I'm i learning that I really didn't know anything about him. But there are some clues. And there's other things going on too, like uh, how he got 86 from the Playboy Mansion, which I think will deserve its own vlog in itself. Um, and him yelling at me at the Playboy Mansion and... Uh, him doing just doing random things I think that'll be a separate video his antics at the Playboy Mansion but then someone who'd yell at me at the fair and he would say things like you're insubordinate um, you're my plus one like I think he really had a problem if like even at the fetish con if I got a lot of attention he wanted him he wanted the attention and me just to be the silent woman just to just go he didn't know how to handle it if 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 I went someplace and it was like my event or someone was talking to me because whenever we would go somewhere and and we would talk 
he would monopolize a conversation and whenever I try to speak or say something he just would get louder or intercept me and then when I looked at him as we're talking to the other person I look at him like this and he goes oh my god I'm sorry and he would cower so it made me look like a bitch to the other person like if, say another person comes up and starts talking and I'm like and he'll interrupt and after a while I get upset after being when we were married nine years I'd be like uh, I'll be like uh, and I'll say his name I'm like honey and I look at him like this and he goes oh I'm sorry and he would act like he was so innocent he didn't understand you know and then so the other person would look at me like because I made that look to him like I'm the bitch <laughs> he was just good at doing that and so I don't know um, there's a lot of other issues and maybe I'll talk more about it later it is kind of hard at work so um, I don't know. I don't know if I want to talk about the Playboy Mansion, how he got 86. Like I said, that'll probably be a separate vlog. And how he acted up at the LA County Fair. Oh, and there's so many times he would just he would just leave. One time we were at the Queen Mary and all of a sudden, you know, he's with his friend, of course, Evil V. And I wanted to see um, Iggy Pop. It was the very end and, and he my husband didn't want to stay. He got drunk, he just left me. And this is before Uber. This is right when Uber and Lyft, I don't even know if they're around. If they're around, we didn't know about it. He just left me, but I stayed anyway, had a good time. And I was gonna walk outside the Queen Mary and just hail a taxi. But I ran into a friend of mine that had a friend of hers picking her up and everything worked out. But yeah, there's many times he would just leave me at the venue. Or we'd be somewhere and he would leave me and I end up walking home at two o'clock in the morning. And he would never, never ask how I was. Of course, like I said, after drinking, like, a few drinks, he just turns into someone else. He's not, like, you can't, I learned you can't argue or try to reason with him when he had a few drinks. Like, he, he is totally selfish, will not go, will not, even if you're right, he would, it doesn't matter. He would not listen to you. He don't care. He's right. You're wrong. The only thing would happen, he would just get violent. He'd break things. There's so many ho things in my house that are broken. All my doors, they can't close anymore because he busted them open. Um, the painting that my friend drew of us, well, um, painted at us, he smashed the frame. I had to go to Aaron Brothers and buy a new frame for it. He would just smash things. Granted, after him doing this for years and years and years, I started doing it too. But then I realized me acting like him only made us both bad, and I didn't want I didn't want to become him, so I stopped. But there was a few years, a couple years, where I would be like, "Oh, you think it's cool to bust things? Well, I'll bust things too." I stopped. That was wrong of me. But there's. And, and it's weird because I'm going around the house now that he's not there and I'm seeing all these busted items. The doors can't close and I'm trying to fix, I'm trying to fix all the doors. I'm trying to do everything. And I'm thinking this was a really toxic relationship from the get go, from the get go, from this MySpace girl for him and from him not picking me up over the threshold, not to think of something romantic and sweet that has to do with me. I'm noticing a lot that he wanted me to do for him. But when it came for me wanting something, just like my big, big birthday, that was basically, uh, turned out to be just like an every weekly event. Like, cause we'd go to this place for dinner on that day, whatever day it was, either a Monday or a Wednesday. And, um, and of course, Evil V was there not, you know, because, and I, I, whenever Evil V, his best friend, was around, I just didn't talk because every, if I say anything, he'd roll his eyes, or if I said up, he would say down. He would just, the conversation was just not be fun. So I learned just to not talk to Evil V. I would just pretend he wasn't even there. And sometimes I wouldn't even talk to my husband because if I talked to my husband, Evil V would chime in whatever I would say. But he would talk to my husband. Like if I say to my husband, oh, the sky is the sky is blue, Evil V would whisper to my husband, oh, the sky is kind of green, actually. 
yeah I put up with that and it did kind of make me when I made this one video where I said I gotta stop doing that where I was like um, getting angry people say oh maybe you have anger issues I think part of it is I get so defensive like after nine years of that I ha I was on defense for all those years and I don't know how to snap out of it I'm learning I'm getting better but I feel like even now when things happen I feel like I need to defend myself all the time and I feel angry about it like I have to defend myself and it's just something that's kind of a habit of mine that I'm trying to learn to do and I'm filming this on my Sony camera so I have no idea how many minutes this is going so I'm sorry if this is like a screwed up video I'll try to make more of these these revelations I guess what you see that come into mind of things past and like I said I still got to do that video of why he was 86 from Playboy Mansion and things the antics he did at the Playboy Mansion which it needs its own vlog um, and whenever I think of certain things I will bring them up to help you guys if you're going through that and also to ask you like do you think I was overreacting I don't think so for your wedding I if I ever do get married again my husband better carry me over the threshold even I don't care how old I get I don't care it's you, you know even if it's in a wheelchair he's wheeling me through or somehow some kind of movement to that tradition I want that to happen I want the romantic fairy tale I do and I hope to have it someday so I'm just gonna end this vlog I don't know how many minutes it is sorry for all the distractions to all my stays cadets and all my briquettes I hope you have a groovy day until next time peace